Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, Hurricane Beryl is making its way towards Jamaica and about to make landfall. And after that, it will head towards the Yucatan and potentially re-strengthen in the Gulf of Mexico before hitting Texas. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. The Black Arrow is Category 4 Hurricane Barrel as it's approaching the southern portion of Jamaica, getting ready to make landfall. Pink Arrow is still 96L, looking better than it did yesterday. It's got more thunderstorm convection and looks like it's coming back to life a little bit. And then we have a tropical wave out in the middle of the Atlantic, which is really suppressed by that Saharan air layer. Here's the vorticity signature, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with those three tropical entities. Here's a close-up view of Beryl. As you can see, it's getting very close to the southern portion of Jamaica. Wouldn't be surprised if that eye wall is now touching the south shore of Jamaica, bringing some significant impacts to that region, so hopefully everybody's taking cover. We have winds of 140 miles per hour, so it's still Category 4, moving west-northwest at 18 miles an hour. And as you can see, more of that cone of uncertainty is in the southern portion of the Texas border, from the Corpus Christi downward to Brownsville. You can see we also have hurricane warnings in effect for the Cayman Islands and portions of the Yucatan Peninsula now as well. You can also see that... After it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula, it's expected to be weakened to a tropical storm, but could re-strengthen back to a hurricane. Potentially, we could see it rapidly intensify, and I'll show you the conditions that could support that on the models. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Barrel. On the left is in English, on the right is in Spanish. You could pause this to take a chance to read it. And here you can see we have pretty good agreement in the models up until the next three days, crossing the Yucatan Peninsula and into the south southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. And then from there, we have a huge spread going to west directly towards Mexico, going northwest towards the, the uh, Mexican-Texas border, or could go more north and head towards the middle of the Texas Gulf Coast. So we have a big spread and a time frame of four days to five days of potential landfall, depending on which direction it wants to go. In terms of intensity, we see it's a Category 4 now. It's going to substantially weaken after going through portions of Jamaica with the land interaction and a lot of wind shear it's facing. And then from there, we have a spread of how strong this storm could be, where it maintains hurricane strength until the Yucatan. Or does it go down to a weak Category 1 or even weaker to a tropical storm before re-strengthening? Events 96L, as you can see here, is looking much more healthier than it did yesterday. Yesterday it was barely holding on to any of that thunderstorm convection. Today it's fired right back up. And unfortunately, as it did so, it was going through the Windward Islands and Leeward Islands. So they are getting socked by uh, probably some gusty winds and a lot of heavy rain, but nothing compared to what they saw with Barrel, but that does uh, hamper the recovery efforts, so hopefully everybody is taking shelter. In terms of its development and track, you can see it looks to go pretty much right behind Barrel uh, and into the southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico, potentially, and as it gets into that more favorable environment in the western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico behind Barrel, we could see this uh, strengthen into a tropical storm. Right now, the National Hurricane Center is giving it a 10% chance over the next two days and a 20% chance over the next seven days. So let's look at the H-Wharf model. Again, I'm using this one because it is the most accurate in terms of intensity and track that I believe that this storm could take. Based on the latest reconnaissance uh, models, you can see we were at a 954 on the model. The actual observations when they first started taking them were at 953, but have climbed to 959. So that shows that this model uh, is pretty much where uh, it should be in terms of where we see the observations currently to support where the model was projecting it to be. So that's why I'm going to use it. 
It is encountering some wind shear, as you can see here, uh, blowing from west to east across the storm. So that's causing some dry air to try to infiltrate on the southern side, but that's away from Jamaica. So it's not really helping them too much right now, but the land interaction and some of that dry air trying to infiltrate with the wind shear will potentially weaken this as it moves through. Uh, as you can see here, the H wharf is saying it could go down to a 987 millibar low pressure as it passes to the south, uh, directly south of the Cayman Islands. So you'll still see uh, hurricane force winds potentially, but it shouldn't be major hurricane force winds uh, because those will be closest to the center of the storm and potentially this will be weaker than a major hurricane at that point as it goes past you tomorrow morning. Then we get to Friday morning, and then we have it looking like it's going to be making landfall somewhere near Cancun or just south of it. And it's a 981 millibar hurricane with, uh, if you look at the, also on the map, our pink hexagon, where we have potentially Invest 96L uh, trying to develop into a tropical storm or depression just south of Hispaniola. That is one of the earliest scenarios of it developing. It's only on the H wharf model. The rest of them say it will be closer to uh, where Beryl is now. Uh, I mean, where it's going to be heading at this time frame or in the Gulf of Mexico. In terms of wind shear environment, you can see that there will be some because it's, even though it's going to be under an upper level ridge, which usually protects it, mostly it will be protected. But you can see just to its west, this is an upper level low. So that's going to cause a lot of wind shear to come up from the south to the north on the west side of the storm. And that's going to erode away some of that structure, allowing more dry air to infiltrate. And crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula could substantially weaken it even further, even as far down as a tropical storm. As you can see here, on the H wharf model for Saturday, July 6th. It's now a tropical storm at a 993 millibar low pressure system. Then we get to Sunday, July 7th, 992. But this is where things could get tricky. As we all know, the Gulf of Mexico is very warm. We have temperatures that are 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius, which is around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a lot of warm water. It's warm at depth. And with the right conditions, with the atmosphere, with this warm water, as we saw Beryl do just before in the main development region, before making landfall in the Windward Islands, we have an upper level ridge overhead that could allow this to rapidly intensify once more. How fast it intensifies, it will be determined that with the condition of how it ent the strength of the storm as it enters the Gulf of Mexico and how much it needs to reorganize itself after crossing the Yucatan. And also the strength of this upper level trough that's just to its north and west. As you can see where I have the black arrow, if this gets a little bit more brighter in color where we have like those yellows and greens, yes, typically that means more wind shear, as you can see here, but that also is a jet streak uh, forming. And as we saw with Hurricane Otis last year before making landfall with Acapulco, when you have very warm sea surface temperatures, upper level ridge overhead protecting the body of the storm, and a trough pulling it to the north and creating a jet streak, that can evacuate the air at the upper level of the atmosphere so fast and causing convergence at the low levels so fast. The only way that can happen is if it rapidly intensifies again. That is a possibility doesn't show it on the models, but we've so seen this before with Otis last year. I don't want to say an Otis is heading towards Texas, but the conditions look potentially that way. So we have to prepare just in case. Mexico, Southern Texas, either, either or. Hopefully it doesn't do it, but the potential is there. And you can see a lot of that dry air is also going to be evacuated. Uh, so it's still going to have a good moisture potential as it continues in its track. And then the H wharf model takes it towards the Texas uh, Mexican border, Brownsville, Rio Grande Valley region as a 984 millibar hurricane. 
Uh, so it doesn't show rapid intensification, but it does show re-strengthening into or at least a hurricane, Category 1. Will it go further than that? Only time will tell, but the conditions are ripe for possible development and rapid intensification. What about the other models? What are they showing? Well, they're still showing a hurricane making landfall, but further to the south. This is the half S uh, A model going towards uh, the south of the border towards Mexico and the same as the B version of the same storm. Now, the GFS model is saying that it could go towards the uh, border of Texas as well as a hurricane, uh, only category one. So we'll keep an eye on that. But the thing that's going to pull this storm north and will determine how far north it goes is this trough. You can see all the red that it was our up level ridge, uh, high pressure that is going to be eroding away. That's going to allow this storm to move further to the north. This is as of Friday, July 5th. So depending on the position of the storm entering the Gulf of Mexico, how strong the storm is to push up against that high pressure and take advantage of that valley of that trough pulling it north, will they determine if it goes into Mexico further to the south, if it's weaker, if it's a stronger storm, could go more northwest towards the border. If it's an even stronger storm, could even go even more north, potentially towards Corpus Christi or points east from there. So on Sunday, July 7th, and now we're looking at the GFS model. You can see it's also going towards the border but instead of Monday, it's on Sunday. So timing is different. Like I said, it could come as soon as Sunday, could come as late as Monday, depending on how fast the storm goes and how far north it goes as well. And then behind it, we have 96L showing up just between Jamaica and Honduras at this point. Conditions uh, will be getting more favorable as it enters the Western Caribbean with those lighter wind shear environment. And that's gonna allow its moisture bubble to maintain itself. And there's not that much dry air in the Gulf of Mexico in the wake of hurricane barrel. So that would be favorable for development too. As you can see here, it goes down to a 994 millibar low pressure in the Southwest Gulf a week from now, next Wednesday on the 10th. Upper level ridge overhead, again, trough, uh, also potentially pulling it more Northwest. And you can see all that moisture it's going to be working with. So we'll keep an eye on 96L. If it finds this favorable environment, it could be a tropical storm at least as well, potentially. If we look at the European model, it takes a stronger barrel towards the Texas-US uh, border as Mexico border as well, but doesn't develop Invest 96L in its wake. Here's the ensemble models showing the intensity and the spread of where this storm could go over the next seven days, European on the left, GFS on the right. So we'll continue to track barrel potentially towards South Texas. Good chance it would be the Rio Grande Valley once more, uh, hopefully not as a strong hurricane, but potentially as a category one but on at minimum. And then Invest 96L behind it if it also develops. And if it does, next name on the list would be Debbie. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Ciphering Weather. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Darcy for donating to yesterday's channel. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you would like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.